What's up, YouTube, and welcome back to the channel. I hope everybody's having a blessed and wonderful day out there. So today, I'm going to go ahead and tell you my gripes about MetaZoo. Now, nah, scratch that. I'm just kidding. I'm not going to talk bad about MetaZoo because I am a very positive and optimistic person, but I do want to speak my piece on all of the stuff I've been seeing going on between the Discord server chats, talking about the fans and the different content creators. Now, I'm not going to call out anybody specific because I'm not one to sit here and start a confrontation behind a keyboard and to get into an argument with somebody. But I just want to go ahead and speak my piece on this. And I just think it's right for me to do so since the majority of my content lately has been about MetaZoo. Now, to go ahead and preface this entire video, this is just an abstract, impromptu, me talking to you and hoping to hear your thoughts in return. And I know a lot of people are mad about certain things, right? There are things that MetaZoo has not done right. And there's a lot of things they've also done right. And when I look at any company at the core, that's pretty much any company, right? PSA, Pokemon, Walmart, it doesn't matter. Every company has flaws. Every company has had mistakes. Every company has had failures. And that is how you learn from those. It, it's really how you have that failure and you bounce back, that resiliency. How do you bounce back from that failure, right? When people sit there and talk about you, how do you respond? And some people are mad that Mike doesn't respond and the most respectful fashion. I do understand that, right? But if people are going to attack my character and I have some fierce competition and people are going to talk about my company, then I am going to respond in a way that I feel is appropriate. And if a person comes into a Discord server and starts bashing or talking bad about the company or not following you know, my allocation rules, then I'm going to push out products to your LGS and I'm going to ban you, then yeah, you have a right to be salty about it. But it doesn't mean that you were not wrong. So I do not agree with everything. If you want to know about some things I don't agree with, I think, yeah, they do push out too many promotional cards. I do think that the collaborations have been a lot, right? It is a lot. I'm not going to say it's not a success story, but after a few years, when do people get fatigued and how many collaborations do you have left to give, right? Because you're going to run dry. A lot of people have been saying, you know what, the chat has been slowing down. The notifications have been slowing down. The NFTs, the PFPs got pushed back. Why is that? You promised us free stuff. There's also some external factors, right? So I've talked about this in many videos before that we have some economy factors right now, some macroeconomic factors. The world right now is in a state of chaos, post-COVID chaos, right? So we have rapid hyperinflation. So right now we're inching towards a recession, which means that a lot of people will lose their jobs and production is going to go down. And a lot of things in the economy are dropping in price. Stocks, crypto, different financial investment instruments, right? Financial vehicles. We're talking about collectibles are dropping in value. Pokemon, MetaZoo is not the only one. Pokemon has fell off of a sharp cliff as well from the high of all the Logan Paul hype. So it is not just MetaZoo. And a lot of people, a lot of people are salty because a lot of people hopped in a bandwagon with MetaZoo going parabolic and they were hoping to get a quick buck and get some money off of it. And when they start to see a lot of products going down, they start blaming MetaZoo saying that they're not saying that they're not doing things right. The print numbers need to be readjusted or they're not doing this right or they have too many promos coming out or they don't have enough gameplay. There's only so much they can do. They have a strong team. They have a strong backbone. They have a lot of collaborations. Their marketing is great. They are going to succeed in the future. Any company has ebbs and flows, right? Any company. So do stocks. They go up, they go down. Nothing goes parabolic or goes up forever. Eventually, it will come down. But over time, just like stocks, when they have crashed or any recession, we've had many of them, right? Even 2008, we've had so many of them. It always bounces back. Now, some companies do fail. They dissolve. They vanish from existence like Beanie Babies. They just disappear. But it doesn't mean that every company will do so. And you have to look at a company and understand, do they have more strengths, their SWAT, their strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats to the company, and see what is stronger, right? And I think MetaZoo has a lot more strengths going for it and a lot more strong people on their team than a lot of other companies to fail. You have 40 to 50 NDTCGs out there, and all of them are vying for the top position to be in the top four, right? But right now... Be honest with yourself and tell me which one is going to be in the top four. Is it going to be MetaZoo or is it going to be one of these other indie TCGs? And it's nothing against them. I've talked about other ones on this channel before, and I really like a lot of them. I like Nostalgics, right? I love Nostalgics. I love Akora. I love the artwork. But when I have to be true to myself and look at it from a business perspective, which one has the best chance 
honestly, of making it to the top. A company that you have not heard about since the Kickstarter or a company that's constantly having updates, having everyone's doing videos on it. They already did all of this in a year between all of these collaborations, all of this marketing, driving product into Walmart, Target, possibly GameStop, an IPO coming, probably a video game, a TV show coming. Like what other company has done that in a year? Cards that have sold for $60,000. You know, sample Mothman that have sold for like $60,000 in a year, in a year plus, right? So, of course, the, the values on these products are going to come down. They always do. On all of these products, they are going to come down. Now, if you are fearful that you think it's crashing, you have to make the choice that you think is best for you. Now, I advise or I recommend, at least what I am going to do, is hold my product for a recovery. I'm not going to sell my stocks out of fear. I'm not gonna sell my collectibles out of fear. But you can diversify. You can buy Magic the Gathering, Pokemon, and other cards. So in the case, the small case that MetaZoo does not last, it does not succeed for the long term, then you do have a diversification portfolio of other stuff that you are collecting that you can sell in case the MetaZoo plummets and it doesn't last. So, and it's also nothing against any content creators specifically, right? I understand some of them are into the drama right now because the drama is getting a lot of views and a lot of people gravitate to the drama. A lot of people see drama on the thumbnails and they gravitate towards it. But for the demise of a company, I'm not going to be there for that. If I have any issues with something, I am blunt. I am honest. I will be transparent. I will tell you what I don't like and what I do like. Um, I will tell you what I'm collecting. I will tell you what I'm buying and why. And I will continue to do that. I will be honest and upfront with you, but I am not going to bash other content creators. I'm not going to bash TCGs. That's just not what I do. I would really like to hear all of your thoughts. If there's some underlying issues, right? The iceberg, we understand the tip of the iceberg. If there's some stuff below at the bottom, some big issues that are resonating with you that you're having issues with, then bring it up. Let's talk about it, right? I would like to know the tea. Let me know the tea so we can talk about it because I am also interested. I am not looking forward to hearing the behind the door stuff, the politic and the politics with Mike Waddell and his team because I didn't get into MetaZoo to hear the drama and the conspiracies. I got into it because I like the cards. I like the artwork and I would like to play the game with other people. That's all I care about. That's what matters to me. And if I can sell it for a profit along the way, that is nice. I do like to make a great return on my investment. So, you know, I would love to hear all of your thoughts. This is just a short impromptu talk for me. Just kind of displaying some of my thoughts is very abstract. There's so many things we can talk about, but I would love to hear what you have to say. I would love to hear your take on it. And hopefully we can chit chat about it and I'll be back soon with another video and I'll see y'all later. Out.